Welcome to Columbia Business Trends, a joint production of the Lake City Columbia County Chamber of Commerce and Florida Gateway College. Columbia Business Trends keeps you informed on what's happening in the business community in Lake City and Columbia County and upcoming events. Now, the hosts of Columbia Business Trends, Daniil Decker and Noah Walker. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Columbia Business Trends, a quarterly review of the local business community. I'm Chamber Board of Director Noah Walker. And I'm Daniil Decker, Chamber Executive Director. We've got a lot to bring you in the next half hour, including reports on the Chamber's legislative breakfast, the kickoff of the I Am Lake City campaign, and a report on presidential candidate Marco Rubio's visit to Lake City. But first, every year, the Chamber recognizes large and small businesses for their accomplishments as well as their contributions to the community. A Citizen of the Year is also recognized. Our Carrie Hagler has the story. Nominated for a Small Business of the Year is Chastine's Downtown. Chastine's motto is great food, friendly faces. Emmy and Robert Chastine have been making good food for the folks of Columbia County for more than 39 years, being in their current location at the Blanche Hotel since 1999. Robert Chastain says he and his family have always focused on quality, fresh ingredients, and creating new products. You know, for us, if, to be here with it, hands-on, has made it a success. Without us being here, it's not like one of the franchises that runs everywhere. This is just like a little specialty thing. Through the years, Chastain has stepped up to contribute to the community, including helping Haven Hospice the March of Dimes, CARC, and the Christian Service Center. Chastain's have been very instrumental of any time we have a need of any type. Um, if we just tell them about it, they have made monetary contributions that have made sure that the need was met. Chastain's Downtown, our first nominee for Small Business of the Year. Gulf Coast Financial is nominated for Small Business of the Year. Three generations now operate the company in downtown Lake City. John Kirkendall opened his business more than 20 years ago. Today, John's son Brent and grandson Blake work for the company. While Gulf Coast client base and profits have grown, so has its list of employees. Three new employees have joined Gulf Coast during the past five years to help the firm build a welcoming, customer-oriented environment. We built a business where we have over a thousand clients, uh, manage close to $45 million in met money, uh, and also have about 80 million in the branch overall with the commission business and the fee business that we have. Gulf Coast Financial is a big believer in giving back to the community by supporting county elementary and high schools. John and Brent are both proud members of the Rotary Club and both are very involved at Parkview Baptist Church. John serves as a deacon while Brent is the music director of the church. So Gulf Coast is just such a positive influence in our community. Uh, John uh, and Brent um, Blake and all of all of his grandsons really are, are just uh, are very influential in our church and just a, a, a good part of, of, of what makes our ministry so successful. Ladies and gentlemen, nominated for Small Business of the Year, Gulf Coast Financial. The North Central Florida Advertiser, also known as the Lake City Advertiser, is nominated for Small Business of the Year. The Advertiser began operations 56 years ago and since that time has printed an edition each and every week. Today, more than 31,000 copies are printed with a circulation of close to 80,000 in North Florida. Part of the company's efforts is to reach as many people as possible. They publish the Florida Gateway Clip and Save, a family magazine four times a year, and they operate the LakeCityForSale.com website all with only 10 employees. We have seen a tremendous growth over the past four years and we are very thankful for that. The advertiser also does its part in contributing to the community. What I love about working with the North Central Florida Advertiser is that the people who work there truly approach everything that they do as an opportunity to serve our community. And they've done that with Haven Hospice and we have appreciated that partnership a great deal. Ladies and gentlemen, nominated for Small Business of the Year, the Lake City Advertiser. The first nominee in the large business category is Clay Electric. Clay Electric opened a district office in Lake City in 1967. The company has increased its local workforce by 10% during the last year. 
Today, Claire Electric serves more than 17,000 customers in Columbia County. Each customer is a member of the cooperative. And the company has refunded profits back to its membership for 41 consecutive years. Uh, this year we gave back uh, $5.25 million in uh, capital credits. So, so with that, that's unique that you know we're, we're here to provide a service uh, that was provided to rural America starting back uh, Clay Electric. The footprint of that, the grassroots effort of Clay Electric started over in Clay County back in 1924. Employees serve in the Kiwanis Club of Lake City, and the company donated 28 $1,000 scholarships to graduating seniors in the county's Clay Electric serves. Recently, Clay Electric donated utility poles to the Columbia County Sheriff's Office and to Richardson Middle School. One of the things that we're doing with our poles is we're making a misting system for the football players and the soccer players and the baseball players so that they can, when that gets done, hopefully within a week or two, the kids, the players will be able to run through and be able to be cooled uh, with the misting so as they're practicing. Ladies and gentlemen, the first nominee in the large business category, Clay Electric. HACO is the next nominee in the large business category. HACO, previously known as TIMCO, is the full service provider of airframe maintenance, repair and overhaul, line services, engine repair, and produces aerospace manufactured products to a broad array of commercial, government, and military customers. The company has seen tremendous growth the last three years, with 20% higher revenue for the Lake City facility. HACO is proud of the employees who continually produce a consistent quality product to their customers. This success has resulted in more than 2.7 million employee hours worked in the last three years. Uh, we're a class 4 repair station, which means that we can work on any aircraft 12,500 pounds or greater. Uh, we just basically have to uh, show the FAA that we have the qualified training, tooling, and uh, technical publications to be able to do you know, any particular aircraft type. HECO is proud to support several projects in the community. In 2015, the company reached its goal in contributions to the Swanee Valley United Way, raising in excess of $35,000. HACO is a big supporter of the Columbia County School District and the programs at Columbia High School. Most recently, they've been very active in helping our robotics team at Columbia High School with uh, Selena Cruz with um, uh, not only funds, but some of their engineering and uh, opportunity to create different parts that they have to uh, have uh, for, the for the robot. Uh, I've been meeting this year to try to start a flight academy uh, in conjunction with HACO. HACO, a nominee for Large Business of the Year. The last nominee in the Large Business category is Potash Corp of White Springs. The company has been a chamber leader and builder since 1995. Despite a reduction in force two years ago, Potash Corp is a strong member of the business community. The company spent $17 million in capital investment last year and utilizes sound business practices to remain strong and competitive. 30% of the company's workforce lives in Columbia County. The economic impact to the local economy in the past year was approximately $15 million. At all our facilities, we focus on five company goals to ensure our success. No harm to people or environment, financial health, supplier of choice, community engagement, and engaged employees. At White Springs, our 490 strong Potash Corp family of employees are proud to be part of the local community. Potash supports Kiwanis Club, the Boys and Girl Scouts, Boys and Girls Clubs, FFA, and higher education at Florida Gateway College. Employees have for years been strong supporters of the Swanee Valley United Way. Along with the company match, employees gave $122,000 during the last fundraising campaign. And, uh, this is not only, it's not just the financial contributions, this is a company that really believes in their employees being engaged. Now, Potash Corp White Springs is definitely the largest company and donor in our United Way market area. Ladies and gentlemen, the final nominee in the large business category, Potash Corp of White Springs. Potash Corp of White Springs was named the Large Business of the Year. Gulf Coast Financial was awarded the Small Business of the Year honor. And Vern Lloyd was chosen as Citizen of the Year by the Chamber.
For the first time in many years, a presidential candidate paid visit to Lake City in Columbia County. Sitting in the front U.S. Row Senator Marco Rubio, Rubio father, who is one of 17 Republican candidates for president, spoke at Florida but Gateway College in May. Several hundred people were in attendance for his speech in the Howard Conference Center. Rubio told the crowd his stance on domestic and international terrorism and a need for That's budget reform like and the importance so important. of education for today's young people. For starters, we should be graduating more people from high school ready to work as welders, as plumbers, as electricians, as machinists, as mechanics. These are good paying jobs. The Rubio visit was sponsored by the area's Republican Executive Committees. The Chamber's Business Enhancement Committee hosted the University of Florida professor who spoke on business taking advantage of social media to attract customers. Dr. Andy Selipak, a communications professor, spoke to more than 90 chamber members. He believes using social media like Facebook and Twitter and others can help both large and small businesses. People are going online and they're trying to either find a new business, they're trying to just see which business that they should give their money to, whether it comes to products or simply walking into the door. And for that reason, it's important to simply be involved in social media so that the customers can find you. At the same time, it's also important to understand what the customers are already saying about your business. So it's about engaging and monitoring with your audience, with your potential customers. And there's going to be a, a huge industry for this, for people involved in public relations, advertising, and marketing. So we know that people are getting jobs in this because we have graduates from the program who are already working in it. And we have a majority of the students, I would say about 95% of the students in the program right now, are currently doing this as a career. When we come back on Columbia Business Trends, we'll have a report on the Chamber Legislative Breakfast and a report on the I Am Lake City campaign. Don't go away. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Your day starts before your feet touch the floor. You listen and encourage plan and schedule, and work hard for the ones you love. You inspire creativity, help with homework, and somehow still find time to do your own. You are an example every day, investing in her future and yours. Florida Gateway College. Start here, go anywhere. Welcome back to the summer edition of Columbia Business Trends. I'm Danielle Decker. And I'm Noah Walker of the North Central Florida Advertiser and a Chamber Board Member. Every year, the Chamber Government Relations Committee hosts a breakfast for its members. It gives elected officials the chance to update constituents on laws and ordinances passed by government. Mike McKee has more. Close to 100 chamber members gathered at the Country Club of Lake City to hear from their legislators, congressional staffers, a county commissioner, and a city council member. First to address the crowd was a representative, Liz Porter, who touted the legislature's efforts to fund cleaning up the Itchtuckney Springs. We've appropriated over $50 million in Springs restoration dollars, and that's, that's a huge effect for North Florida and our springs. Um, not only are they just a natural treasure that we all want to preserve, but they are also an economic engine for our area. Columbia County Commissioner Scarlett Fresina spoke and said that she was proud that the county government is doing well. We are able to meet all of our budgetary needs and what we're required to cover. We're fortunate that Columbia County is very financially sound. City Council Member George Ward says the city is just finishing up major projects for residents and business owners. Presently we are in the construction phase for the kick lighter wastewater treatment plant. It's a million and a half gallon per day plant. It will uh, posture the city, it's expandable to three million gallons per day. It'll posture the city for growth for many years to come. The Chamber of Commerce has sponsored the annual legislative breakfast for many years. In early July, the Lake City VA Medical Center hosted an event called Summer of Service. 
those who attended could get more information on volunteer opportunities helping veterans. The event was held in the Lake City VA Auditorium. The goal was to show how the community can come together to assist area vets and their families. Veteran organizations were there with information on the services offered. As far as volunteering goes, uh, we provide all sorts of different services for the veterans. Um, currently, we're looking for people to assist with both the transportation, which is a volunteer transportation network, so drivers that, that commute people from facility to facility. We're also looking for people who may be in, uh, excited about driving uh, golf carts to shuttle people from the far outposts of the parking lot up to the main gates. Um, outside of that, we have administrative areas, um, patient care assistance, no, no direct patient care, but involvement in talking, socializing, and making the inpatients feel comfortable. The Summer of Service program is an effort begun by the Federal Veterans Administration. VA officials say the general community isn't aware of the services available to vets. The Chamber has a new effort to convince locals to shop local. The campaign is called I Am Lake City and is designed to help local businesses, which are the backbone of the local economy. Companies who partner with the Chamber receive advertising in the local print media, the local radio, and on social media, as well as the Chamber's website. Several businesses have already signed on for the campaign. I Am Lake City campaign has been something that's very positive for the community, mostly because we are keeping community viable and community dollars in the city. I think that it has helped out my business a lot just in the fact that I am bringing in customers that might even be going down to Gainesville or somewhere outside of the county in fact. Um, I think that uh, I Am Lake City seems to be doing something very positive not only for me but also for the community at large. Any business owner who would like to take part in the I Am Lake City campaign is asked to contact the chamber at 752-3690. The Lake City chapter of the Habitat for Humanity has finished their latest home and made the family that took ownership very happy. Carrie Hagler has more for Columbia Business Trends. Habitat for Humanity volunteers built the home on Southeast Monroe Street and in return the new owner, Trenisha Carter, agreed to volunteer 350 hours of her own time in building this home and work on other projects being constructed by Habitat for Humanity. What generally happens though is they're building somebody else's house before theirs in order to accumulate, accumulate those hours. So once they get their house, it's been a pretty long process, a year and a half or so. Habitat for Humanity Worldwide has been building homes for decades and this year finished their one millionth home. Proud new homeowner Tranesha Carter and her two kids received quilts made by the Ladies of the Lake Quilt Guild. She was visibly moved when asked to make comments about her new home. First and foremost, I would like to thank God for placing a habitat in my life to bless me and my kids with this beautiful home. The Lake City Habitat for Humanity chapter has plans to start construction on a new house just north of Fort White. Their goal is to finish one new home each year in Columbia County. I'm Kerry Higgler for Columbia Business Trends. When we come back on Columbia Business Trends, we'll have a look at the mixers and ribbon cuttings from the mid part of the year. But first, here's a look at the upcoming events in the Chamber calendar.
Welcome back to the summer edition of Columbia Business Trends, a program produced by Florida Gateway College highlighting Chamber member activities. 20 years ago this month, Chamber leaders produced a similar program that highlighted efforts of the Chamber and its membership. In this installment, we look back at the Lake City and Columbia County Chamber from August 1995. Congressman Pete Peterson is a frustrated lawmaker, and after 40 years of Democratic control of the Congress, the Republicans have taken over and that has Peterson flustered. Agenda has become much more uh, uh, parochial, to be honest with you. Uh, we've lost, frankly, a lot of the bipartisan process because I think what the Republicans feel they have to do is, is make a, a major change in order to move this thing way over to the extreme right and then maybe over a period of years move it back. But uh, currently right now it's, it's rather extreme in its uh, proposal and it's very difficult to get any kind of movement because for all practical purposes, the uh, leadership on the Republican side has kept everyone pretty tight. The three-term congressman is on the House Small Business Committee and he explains what he wants to see accomplished in that area. Something that we're working on that is the advocacy uh, uh, bureau that we have within the uh, administration that works in behalf of the small businesses uh, of America in dealing with the various kinds of uh, regulations that, that all of the other departments are putting out. So it's something I've really put my uh, time in on to try to bring that to fruition. President Clinton recently recommended that the Food and Drug Administration deem tobacco a drug, but the Mariana, Florida congressman thinks that's a mistake. I'm, obje I'm objecting to that very strenuously, and uh, I, I, I don't object for him to say, let's don't sell cigarettes or don't make those available to minors, because I think that's uh, very commendable. In fact, I would support that, and I think everyone in the com this community as well would support. But I don't think they're going to support letting the FDA take uh, nicotine as as it now exists within the tobacco product and have that listed as a uh, uh, a drug of which you would have to get a prescription for to buy a pack of cigarettes. I think that's a little too extreme. After meeting with constituents in his 17-county district, Peterson will be back in Washington September 6th when the Congress reconvenes. For many retailers, only the Christmas shopping season tops back to school and sales. The Walmart Supercenter in Lake City was stocked throughout August with back to school supplies, and it's a busy time of year. Everybody uh, generally preparing for, you have the college kids and you have the high school kids, and all the schools combined creates a pretty good rush. We tracked uh, from several counties around, and a lot of people just come out here just to see the store because of its size, and a lot of people love the convenience of having the food and uh, the general merchandise in the same store. Nice Back to school there. shopping is a family affair. Parents and children could be seen shopping together, and retailers love what Back to School does for sales. It's like Christmas. Um, you're looking at increased business, um, increased sales. In, you see the flow of people right now. People are working very hard at getting ready for back to school. With a sometimes fickle younger market, retailers have to stock the items that are hot. Uh, generally for back to school, the kids love the trendy items. Whatever's trendy is the hottest items going. And that includes apparel plus notebooks. Like right now, uh, Batman Forever seems to be the hottest one, uh, Pocahontas. You just can't keep them in. As usual, denim. Uh, we can't get enough denim. Denim, the little skorts, just to look at it from the front, it looks like a, a little short, uh, skirt. Actually, it's shorts. We can't keep that in the store. Um, anything in the plaids, the plaid is real popular this year. Um, so anything along that line. The kids pretty well dictate what they want, and the moms pretty much, they, they please them. <laughs> you know, so if you have something that's trendy and flashy, you know, they'll want it and they'll buy it. School got back into session last week, and now the kids, as well as the parents and retailers, can now look forward to the Christmas buying season. Each month, the Chamber highlights member businesses by holding mixers. And for new businesses, we officially open the business with a ribbon cutting. Here's this quarter's installment of Ribbons and Mixers. Duchesne's Breakfast and More held our grand opening in May. The restaurant is located at the intersection of Main Boulevard and Bayard Drive. The owner, John Duchesne, had been making improvements to the building for months before the opening. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and features a bakery where items are made fresh daily. This, uh, this is home. Ms. Kay and I wanted this to be uh, for everybody over here on this side of town. We, we want it to be like walking into Mom's kitchen and we made our decor that way to make everybody welcome and feel comfortable when they come in. A company who's been in business for several years in Lake City has moved to a new location. 
and they held an open house to celebrate. Physical Therapy and Balance, formerly known as Promotion Therapy, recently opened their new location on Southwest Main Boulevard. Physical Therapy promises to fix what's broken with the patient. Physical Therapy offers hands-on therapy treatments by experts during one-on-one sessions. Bring together some of the best science known when it comes to balance, treating balance disorders and treating falls in seniors, um, treating people who are finding themselves in prosthetics, having to be trained how to walk again, people who have other disabilities or impairments. Century 21, the Darby Rogers Agency, hosted a chamber mixer in May. Century 21 is one of the leading real estate brokers in Columbia County. The company recently held a grand opening at their new location on Florida Gateway Boulevard. The company specializes in residential and commercial properties, primarily in Columbia and Swanee counties. And their agents have experience in finance, contracts, marketing, and negotiating to benefit their clients. Quiet Whisper Assisted Living Facility has just opened on Derrick Glen in Lake City. They offer housing and assisted daily living for elderly individuals. With more than 30 years in the field, Celia Davis, the owner, has developed the skills and expertise to be successful. I'm here to give a service, a humbling service, and a great service, I hope, to the community. And if I can help anyone, anyone, just let me know and call me, I won't hesitate. Constant training and guidance ensures the staff is well equipped to care for each resident. The Chamber's Mixer for the month of June was held at Treasures of Lake City on Marion Avenue. The store opened last year and carries items that are on consignment, including collectibles, jewelry, furniture, vintage clothing, and more. Treasures of Lake City also sells bullion, gold bars, and silver, and coins. The business operates sales on eBay as well. Treasures of Lake City has been open for about a year and invites everyone who hasn't made a stop in to drop by and see the inventory. Another Ways Domestic Abuse Shelter has been remodeled, and the organization showed off their updated facility in July. A state grant helped Another Way with a million dollar project. The remodeling includes a large living space that was once a courtyard and a large kitchen. Now the organization has far more room for clients. The last three years we operated totally over capacity, and um, this is taking us from 35 beds to 55 beds besides the fact that it's a lot nicer than what we had before. Florida Gateway College hosted a chamber mixer to introduce the new president, Dr. Lawrence Barrett. Barrett began his tenure at FGC July 27th, replacing longtime president, Dr. Chuck Hall. Close to 100 people showed up in the college's Wilson Rivers Library and Media Center to welcome Dr. Barrett. Dr. Barrett was the head of Eastern Maine Community College for five years before being approved as president at FGC. And that's the Columbia Business Trends, Ribbons and Mixers. That's going to do it for this edition of Columbia Business Trends. If you would like to join the Chamber, please give us a call at 752-3690 or log on to our website, lakecitychamber.com. We leave you with highlights from the Chamber-sponsored 4th of July celebration at the Columbia County Fairgrounds. It may have been a little wet, but it was still a success. Join us for the fall edition of Columbia Business Trends.